Hey, Dr. Godis. Hey! I found this weird thing in the chem lab. Do you know what this is? Wow. You know what? It looks kind of familiar. I think that's from when we were doing the uh, net ionic equations. Oh, okay. So I, I, I think we uh, added sodium phosphate and we added uh, nickel 2 acetate and we formed this solid. You know, uh, if you're not part of the solution, you're a precipitate. Oh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so we formed a precipitate in this solution? Yep. Okay. And that's what we're going to be learning about today in class, or tomorrow in class, is precipitation reactions. And all that means is it's a chemical reaction where you form a solid. Okay. And we did one. Oh, look. We have all the chemistry written up here. So the key to a precipitation reaction is that you start with two starting materials that are soluble, i.e. aqueous. You mix them together. What happens is that the partners switch. Okay. Right? This cation grabs onto that anion. This cation grabs onto that ion. So we just switch partners. Right? You've got to make sure that the cation matches with an anion. You can't match a cation with a cation. They're going to repel each other, right? Right. Because opposites attract. Opposites attract. Right. The same repel. Okay. And so we swi switch uh, partners, and then we're going to learn some rules to predict when things precipitate and when things are aqueous. Right? So it turns out I happen to know those rules. And because so, you're a chemist. Right? You will learn these rules, and you'll find that uh, sodium acetate is a soluble compound. That's why it stays aqueous. But it turns out most phosphate compounds are insoluble. And so when phosphate links with most things, it forms a solid. Right. Now, of course, the trick to the uh, solubility rules is that there are exceptions. And for example, one of the exceptions for phosphate being insoluble, i.e. forming solid, is sodium. When sodium is partnered with pretty much anything, it's going to be a soluble compound. So sodium phosphate is soluble because that's one of the exceptions to the phosphate rule, but nickel phosphate is not soluble. It forms a solid or a precipitate. So the way we test for whether or not something will form a precipitate is we swap the cations and the anions yep. for their partners and then determine whether the new molecules we made are either going to be not so attracted to each other right, yep. and stay in aqueous solution yep. or are going to be really attracted to each other and form a solid. Yeah. And so, why is phosphate really attracted to almost everything? Well, remember, it's an ion, right? And what holds ionic compounds together? Electrostatic attraction. Yeah. Positive attracted negative. The bigger the charge, the bigger the attraction. And so it has a negative 3 charge. And I think that's the highest charge anion that we've seen. And so it's attracted to almost everything. Of course, sodium has only a little mini positive one charge, and so it's like, oh, you may be really attractive, but, you know, I'm not. Oh. Yeah. So because the nickel is two plus, yeah. and the phosphate is three minus, they really have the hots for each other. Right, exactly. You, oh. can, you cannot separate those guys. Okay. Or whatever. Well, I learned something new today. Okay, cool. So uh, good luck on the activity.